Hey, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Grief Drums, and today we're going to be taking a look at Skyscraper, the recent rework that is live as part of the test server. And despite the fact that the map has had a rework, there's a lot of elements that haven't really changed. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going over the map. We're going to be discussing a few different angles, what the rooms are going to be above, so you know exactly where you are on the map. Just to give you a bit of a rundown and a bit of a heads up, before you go ahead and jump onto this map when it gets added into the ranked playlist. Just very quickly before we do get started, I stream over on Twitch three days a week on Thursdays, Fridays and Sundays. Or alternatively, you can head over to Twitter and follow me on there. Keep up to date with everything that's going on. Now, without any further ado, let's just go ahead and jump straight into today's video. So here we are over on the new skyscraper and you know what I really like the aesthetic of this map it's they've sort of kept it with how it was but they've just tidied it up cleaned it up a little bit um, and the rooms feel a fair bit bigger now they I mean obviously things like geisha has been expanded out quite a bit um, walls have been moved over and this section here used to actually be outside I don't know if you remember correctly but the wall was there running horizontally and that was the way to get into geisha. Now, the only issue with that and with this change that they've implemented is this. Let me go ahead and just open this right here. Previously, as an attacker, when you were out on the balcony, you were susceptible to being run out on, especially from this window here, which goes through to the terrace area. So people would jump out of there and they would kill you. Now, back in the day, you had the option to dip into this area and you would be safe because they couldn't see you from down there. So you could sort of hide around the corner and do any droning that you needed to do before the wall got opened. That's not the case now. There is literally nowhere that you can go at all. You're just stuck out here. So if you open any of this stuff up and you decide you're going to drone, you're liable to get jumped out on by anyone down there, by anyone here, and there's nowhere at all you can go, which is why I kind of wish they would have extended this balcony out a little bit further and sent it down that way just a little bit. And as you'll see by this picture here, um, I created this in paint. It took, I don't know, five seconds to do, or about well, two minutes, you know. The, the, the lines trigger me. I know that they're not straight and it's geometrically incorrect, but that's by, you know, by the by. Don't worry about that. The point of it is to just give the attackers somewhere where they can actually get out of the line of sight of these jump outs and drone for a couple of seconds. Just have that little bit of respite. What I would do is I would put something there, like a, a box of some sort that they could stand behind so people can't just um, come jumping out of the geisha window and pre-fire this area. So you'd make it that they are going to be detected. You know, it gives you that extra couple of seconds. At the minute, the map is playing out fairly similarly to how it used to. People are going to go ahead and open this wall on attack. Um, and I think that's mainly down to the fact that they're just used to attacking this way. It does give you a you know, a few different options. You get the option to open up some lines of sight and prevent rotations across between the two sites. And by coming through into the Geisha hallway, you can sort of use Hibana or Ace Thermite, someone like that, to open up into karaoke itself and try and go for a plant. Now, it's probably not the best way to go, but it's the way that a lot of people seem to be going at the moment. Now, a few of the changes that have occurred in this side of the map is there's one wall has been fully like hardened so it's no longer a soft wall so you only need three to reinforce this which actually looks down onto the black stairs the door itself has adjusted previously i don't know if you remember the door was facing this way and you had to go into drum through a slightly different way so now it's more of a straight on look which can be controlled i believe from that window there you get a line of sight if someone's repelling on that window all the way through to this doorway. Now, it's not the best line of sight. I'll be the first to admit that. Um, but they can get a line of sight through into this area. So it is something you have to be wary of if you're moving around. Now, the back of the tea room itself. This wall previously was a hard wall and the gold bars have been removed. This is somewhere that you are going to find people like Echo and Maestro still sort of hunkering down in here. The only problem is, is with the wall being soft behind them, they're liable to getting killed pretty easily by a Maverick or someone like that, even if it gets reinforced. Now, as a result, one thing that I've noticed that teams are starting to gravitate towards, which is probably the better push, um, is actually opening this up to try and get a plant down just inside of here. Um, you've got the, the solid surfaces just here. 
which can facilitate a plant. And if you go down below, you can actually protect the diffuser from outside or from downstairs at the very least. Now, the only problem with this area of the map is um, you are fairly limited as to lines of sight and trying to get control. But if you win your ones, it can be pretty handy. Now, as far as defending all of this side goes, um, I've noticed that previously a lot of people would hunker down inside of tea room and then they would open up all of karaoke now with only one window on karaoke and not much chance of a quick jump in a lot of people are defending from karaoke instead so by opening up a section of the wall just over here and placing a shield down just outside of this just here you can actually control this doorway you do have to be wary of this wall if you don't reinforce it you can get shot from the door and they get a really good line of sight into this uh this site but there is so much vertical destruction here that you can control stairways um from relative safety you can control down into kitchen you can well i suppose that's not the kitchen that's the dining room bit but you get the point the barbecue you can control into there and people can play from inside of this side of the map that's definitely one way to play that I've noticed that has adjusted. Now, as with the legacy version of the map, if you spawn over at ventilation units, uh, you can go ahead and just rappel up to the top. This is an absolute death trap coming up here. It really is. You're still getting run out from up there. There's run outs from over here. And quite frankly, I'm really surprised that these ventilation units weren't made to be higher. But I guess the point of this spawn was always the fact that it was high risk, high reward. You know, you can get to the map very, very quickly from here, or at least that was the intention. The amount of times I've seen Jaegers come running out of this bit and the line of sight they get from the off, the seconds that they get there, is just mental. You know, at the beginning of the round, if you wait 10 seconds, not even that, maybe five seconds, and then look at running out, you can maybe even wait until you hear the camera pop. But the second you hear it, you come over to here and you've got a quick pick. It's a little bit frustrating. One nice addition is this banner right here. This banner is to stop that line of sight from there. For anyone that is rappelling up onto this new section that's been opened. Now obviously Ace can go ahead and open this up. And you can get lines of sight into the actual uh, exhibition room and office. You do have to be wary of runouts from this doorway. But as far as this side of the map is concerned, it's still reasonably similar you're going to find that a lot of defenders are still opening this up. They're still placing shields. Proximity mines are now being used. And they're still contesting all of this as and when they can from outside. With the window being sealed inside of the office, your only real option as an attacker to try and get in amongst, you know, be a cat amongst the pigeons is this window right here. You'll notice that a lot of people are opening this and they're holding a line of sight through. So that's something you're going to have to be wary of. As a defender one thing i've been really liking doing is opening this section just up here and then standing up on the table by doing this it gives you a line of sight onto the window or at least a different line of sight so you can peek from different ways and it just sort of catches people out a little bit from this same spot you can also go ahead and as i found out if you make it too far over you're going to get shot from the window but if you make it just over to the right if you stay on the right of the table and you make a line of sight in this section. You'll notice that that right there is actually a doorway. Now I'm going to open all this up so we can see it nice and clearly. But that's the doorway that looks through into... I think it's called VIP now. But that's the reception area and that just there is Dragon. So you can actually look through into that through little holes. Um, and catch people out. As and when they come through they're not going to expect you to be that high up. They're going to be looking at sort of head height. But as they come into this VIP clearance or from Dragon, they're looking around. And you're going to have a smaller hole just up here. If you wait until they start pushing into this bit and they're trying to clear and they're trying to check bar, you're going to just take their head off. So from inside of office, it can be extremely strong. Another thing I've been really enjoying doing is opening the bottom section of this wall. Now, this is way too much because I'm doing it with Sledge. Honestly... I've been doing it with Tachanka, and I've been in open up something more akin to that, about that high. And I'm looking for feet. So from there, I come through to here, and I play behind the desk in office with a single punch hole. Now, with that single punch hole, you'll notice that that is a red section through there. I'm going to go ahead and put a load of rounds down over there, just so you can see exactly where it goes to. But that goes to pretty much the opposite side of the map. 
That controls all the way through Terrace, all the way to the stairs on Drum. So as people come down here, if just the lower section is open, they don't really pay too much attention to it, and their feet are getting shot out. That could be one really nice way to cover that for sure. The other thing people are doing is they are reinforcing all of these off. Personally, I wouldn't recommend this. I would open at least some of it to allow you to hold different angles onto respective entry points. And if one person is contesting drum, for example, from this side of the map, an exhibition room from behind cover and, you know, just trying to play as sneaky as possible, the other person that's inside of the office has a bit of a crossfire. Now, as before, all of this office does actually look over the site below. It looks down into sort of the bathroom. You can cover the window just about. So that's the window that comes into the little cloakroom. As and when they jump in, you can shoot them. And if you're playing from upstairs, you can actually look onto the soft wall that is downstairs in the bathroom, which I'll go and show you very quickly just before this round ends. That's this soft wall just down here. Now, vertical play on this map is still huge. It really is. It's one of those maps that just seems to be... I don't know. I really enjoy the vertical play on it. I really do. So, as a result, if you're protecting the barbecue downstairs, um, what you can do is you can utilize the karaoke room. You can open up all the different lines of sights within here. I found that just this half wall, if you don't make anything further over than that, you don't have to worry too much about that window. But you can get all sorts of different lines of sight into the room below and you can cover doorways you can cover rotates that you might put in but playing someone over near geisha i've been playing frost on this just because uh, we haven't really had a full team composition um, and the frost has allowed me to sort of be able to bait people into different rotates and stuff with her new shotgun create all the lines of sight i need reinforce main walls off and you know put traps under windows so i can contest those as and when i need to but then from there, I've been actually opening up this section of floor in the geisha sort of entrance way, if you will. To try and allow me to have the lines of sight onto the doorway coming in. As you can see down there, that's the doorway coming in. As soon as someone gets into that line of sight, I can go ahead and shoot them. Almost exactly the same as the legacy version of the map. The other thing you can do is you can open up right into this corner... And you can get all sorts of lines of sight down into the actual uh, lobby area. It's not great, but you can cover the entrance, the door going into... Uh, what is that? Is that barbecue there, I think? Opening the hatch gives you a line of sight into delivery as well, which is a, a really good point to note. But yeah, this is the sushi bar. That's where I was just opening up. And then this is the door that goes directly into barbecue. Now, this section of the map, the reception, um, now that the double door has actually been sealed, can be a pretty strong area to play from. You've got to be careful of windows. You have to be careful of that window, and you have to be careful of that window, because you can quite easily get caught into a crossfire. But you could be made very difficult to move out of here if you put enough utility into it. You know, with Surya Gates, Shields, Jaeger ADSs, and Walmais, there's all sorts of different ways you can actually control this area, and subsequently, many of the different entry points into the actual site. So defending the bathroom, you can cover delivery, you can cover anyone that's coming from the kitchen area, and you can come out of the line of sight of all of those different areas by just hunkering down here. As and when you need to, you can then go and contest different areas of the map. But I find that this stops just people running in quickly, and it can be pretty handy. You are kind of stuck here. This is kind of like a, a bakery on cafe. It's an all or nothing. You're going to be playing your life there. You're going to be playing to the death. But you are going to be in the thick of it. And you're probably going to bag yourself quite a few kills if you play stuff correctly. Now at the minute, because I'm playing this on the Discovery playlist, there are it's very difficult to figure out exactly where people are going to be coming from. Um, once this gets into ranked, it's going to start changing. A meta will start forming around the game. But as it currently stands... A lot of people are just coming straight through this door into the side entrance um, next to the bedroom. This looks directly into the bedroom, this wall. So a lot of teams are going for the most obvious and accurate route. They're going straight into here. This is an absolute death trap. It really is, or it certainly can be. By going upstairs 
and standing next to this double door just here. This red suit of armor just next to that. You can go ahead and open this and you can look down directly into that box to cover the doorway. You can move it further back if you want to to cover against thermites so you can see further. If he goes all the way over to that far wall, you can take out any thermite or someone that's trying to get that. If you've got impact nades, you can obviously impact down through here to do some impact tricking. Or the other option is if you're willing to risk being in front of this window, which is kind of, you know, high risk, high reward again. You could potentially come into here and just shoot stuff off of the roof. But I probably wouldn't risk doing that. Now that this window is sealed, you would definitely start to find more and more people hunkering down inside of the bathroom to try and cover different areas. One thing you do have to worry about is if you're moving around in any of this section is this drone hole right here. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and showcase this on attack. But this is something that Core Ross found the other day and it's been pretty cheeky actually. Now as I say, Core Ross was using this the other day and it was a really cheeky angle. It's going to be rare that you're going to get anyone from it. But you might catch someone that's not paying much attention. By coming over to this section just here on the sand garden, turning over and rappelling upside down, you'll notice that you actually get a line of sight into that drone hole and you can see a fair old bit of the room now what i'll do is i'll uh, i'll put a few bullet holes in there just so you can see exactly where we're shooting in a second and then we'll go in and actually have a look at where these bullets have fallen so as you'll see all the bullets have gone in a direct line from here you have to be careful obviously there is a hard surface just there so you are quite far over to the left just up there essentially um but anyone that's trying to play to the left of this window they might be in for a bit of a shock. Even if you could just chip away at their health, it's going to be better than nothing, isn't it? One last thing that I do really want to touch on today. Um, I think I'm going to go into this map a little bit more in depth once strategies are actually formulated. Because at the minute, it's kind of a bit of a shot in the dark. I'm, I'm basing a lot of this on what I have seen inside of the Discovery playlist. And there are varying ranks inside of that. So as a result, I'm not getting the exact... Um, metas of where people are pushing from. It's kind of varied and we're still learning the map at the moment. When it comes off the TS and goes into ranked, if people don't ban it, we might be able to learn a bit more about it. But for now, we're going to have to kind of go with a blend of the old tips and the new tips. This is one of them. If, any, if anyone's hunkering down inside of gold, this spot right here is going to be exactly where they're going to be and it's going to allow you to actually nade them out. Now, I didn't know this the other day. But it's the third panel across above the fish. I came down here. I was desperate to kill the Echo. I was absolutely desperate. And I couldn't get him because I thought it was going to be this one. So I was trying to shoot up through this section. And I was just I was in the wrong area. So that one right there is the first. And if I go ahead and ping the other side. Just on the other side in between the two lights. Is where you're going to want to land the grenade if he's on the other side. I'm afraid that's going to be it for today's video. Hopefully there's something that you can take away from it. Fingers crossed there's a, a piece of advice that you maybe didn't know that's going to help you out when you do finally get to play this map, if you haven't already. I'd love to know what you guys think of this map, though. Are you enjoying it, or, you know, do you think it looks like it's no different? I mean, to me, it kind of looks and plays fairly similarly to the way it used to, but I'm curious to hear what others think. If you did enjoy the video, please consider hitting that thumbs up. If you don't already, make sure to subscribe. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, stay reckless and relentless.